welcome to more Pokemon! I just wanted to show you guys that after you close down the game and load it up for a second time, you can actually see this awesome, beautiful little title screen. And more importantly, you can see Freya right here. She's actually got the outfit that we put on her last time. So if you change her outfit, it actually shows up. And I think that's awesome. Let's go, Eevee. We got crud to catch. So yeah, we'll go ahead and continue our adventure. I kind of left my game on overnight, so I've got 16 hours of playtime already, but don't worry about that, crud. Let's just continue our adventure. So we're here on Route 1 still, or I guess Pallet Town, but now we're on Route 1. So there's really not much to do on Route 1, although after we deliver the parcel, this guy is here now. And we can talk to him, and he'll actually give us a free item. He'll give us a sample. So here we get a potion. This is an item we can use to restore 20 HP to our Pokemon. Pretty handy. The Pokemon may take damage when you battle other trainers. Be sure to use a potion on them if that happens. Sounds good. And one other thing. Last episode, we got a uh, berry from the bush up here. And we can actually get one again. But you see, Eevee's not following us anymore, so we actually cannot get it. So what we have to do instead is go to our party, and we can actually have any Pokemon that we capture follow behind us. So we can choose Pidgey, Rattata, or Bellsprout. I guess we'll go ahead and choose Pidgey right here. We just select them, we choose Take Out of Pokeball, and you can see there's that star on them right now. And suddenly, out they are, and they'll actually find that berry for us. So let's go talk to them here. I think the berries come back once a day, but I'm not exactly sure on that, but I think it's once a day, something like that. So Pidgey found something in the plants, we get another Raspberry. And also, the guy mentioned trainer battles. We are going to have a trainer battle with this guy. I just want to mention, the Pokemon that is at the top left of your party here, that is the one that's going to come out first in battle. So we've got Freya up front, so she's going to come out first here. So let's go talk to him. Trainer's eyes have met. I'll battle you with my favorite Pokemon. Yeah, if you get in the eyesight of a trainer that wants to battle, then you're going to have to battle him, I guess. In some cases, you can kind of like dodge their sight. But here we got Youngster Ronnie. And let's see what he's got. He's got a Rattata. Makes sense considering which route we're on. There's only three Pokemon to choose from here. But we'll send out Freya. Now, his Rattata is only going to be level three, so he'll be pretty easy to, to kill. I'm going to go ahead and do quick attack here. We might kill it in one blow. No, we're going to take two. He goes for Tail Whip. That will lower my defense, but we're going to defeat him before he even gets a chance to attack us, so that defense drop does not matter. Although, one more thing. If we press Y right here... You can actually choose the Pokemon, and you can see all of their different stats ups and downs. So you can see we have the down blue arrow, that means my defense is down one level. So it'll be a red if it's it's an up arrow or whatever, so you can check your stats like that as well. Uh, let's go ahead and do quick attack. This should finish him off. And of course, all the all the stat changes, like the toe up and stuff, once you're out of the battle, that goes away. So that's just for the battle that you're in. We get 12 experience there. The rest of the Pokemon in the party get a little bit as well. So Pidgey's up to level 6, awesome. And there we go, you're really strong. So here we get money, but also we get some Pokeballs. That's a new thing in this version of Pokemon. Pretty much every battle, not all of them, but a lot of them will give you balls to catch more stuff. Which, speaking of catching stuff, we could catch this Rattata here that just ran into me, but I'm gonna run away here. Ha, we defeated you! I'm sure there are lots of other trainers on routes or in the forest that will want to battle you. Well, up here we've got Yarg. Let's go see if he'll battle me again. Back in Viridian City here. Huh? You look pretty pleased about something, Psycho. Oh, you beat another trainer? Good job! Well, since we're on the topic, the Pokemon you sent into battle might have lost some health points or power points. You should take them to a Pokemon Center and get them healed up. It doesn't cost any money and doesn't take long at all either. Just remember, heal up after battles! Okay, we could do that, but the Rattata didn't exactly damage me at all. But we might as well go in there, just check it out. All that good stuff. So let's go inside the Pokemon Center here. There's a few characters to talk to. I don't think any of them say anything too interesting. Uh, there's a Pokemon Center in every town ahead. They charge no money, so don't be shy about healing. Yep, pretty much what Yarg said. Now let's go talk to this little girl. Have you battled a trainer? If your Pokemon's speed stat is higher than the opposing Pokemon speed stat, you'll attack first. Although, keep in mind, moves like Quick Attack kind of ignore the speed stat, and they'll just go first anyways. But if two Pokemon both use Quick Attack, then the one with the higher speed stat will still go first. So this guy says, feel free to read the magazines at the corner, which I actually will do. Pretty much every Pokemon Center in the game has these magazine racks, and sometimes they have interesting text. This one says there's a flashy advertisement on the back. Will you read it? I guess we'll go ahead and say yes. So there we go. If you use what are called secret techniques, you can chop, uh, chop trees, open paths, light up dark places, and so on. They are sure to be very useful. Don't you want to learn a secret technique now, too? Uh, so if you've ever played a previous Pokemon game, you'll know of something called an HM, or a hidden machine. Basically, HMs are replaced by secret techniques in this game, so they all have different names, but they do the same stuff as HMs did in the past games, so we'll get those as we go throughout the playthrough here. So let's just go ahead and heal up. Restore those, like, 2 PP for my quick attack that I used on that Rattata. And we can even talk to Chansey! Hey, Chansey! 
One thing I always thought was weird, if you talk to Pokemon like Chansey right there, they did not get added to your Pokedex, not even as seen. I always thought that was a weird oversight. Like, I see Chansey there, why can't I add it? But you can't. So we're back out of the Pokemon Center, and there's another building here in Viridian City that I want to check out. This is the Trainer School. This has a lot of info about basic stuff in Pokemon. If you're already a Pokemon veteran, you might want to skip ahead, or if you just don't care what to see is inside this building, but I figure it's in the game. Let's go over it real quick, so let's go talk to everyone. We're studying about the Pokemon types. Eevee is a normal type, that's what we have. It doesn't have too many weaknesses, but it is weak against fighting type moves, and being weak to a type basically means that you'll take double damage from that type. Ooh, I'm trying to memorize all my notes. Okay, we could actually read their books. I guess I should do that. There's some notes in the notebook. The Pokemon with the higher speed stat gets to move first. The girl in the Pokemon Center already told us that. Here's some notes in the notebook. Attack affects physical moves. Special attack affects special moves. The higher the stat, the more damage the move does. And we can actually see what type a move is if we go and look at our summary right here. If a move is a physical type, let's go to more details and check out the moves. Oops, check out the moves here. You see next to category how it has like that red poppy looking thing? That means that it is a physical attack. These ones are not actually attacks, so it has that symbol. Do I have anything that has a special attack right now? I don't think I've got anything with a special attack, but it's got a different icon. You can check it right there. So the one that's not that red explosion is special, basically. If you walk around with your Pokemon or let them battle, they'll grow to love you even more. Heck yeah, they will. Over here, in addition to HP, Pokemon have PP, which they use to perform moves. We've already talked about PP. Let's go talk to the teacher here. Okay, everyone, where can you find information that is useful for trainers? That's right, in this classroom. You can find it on the blackboard or in books. Please read bulletin boards. We'll get to that, but let's go read this book here. This one actually has a lot of pages for some reason. The first page, Pokeballs are used to catch and carry Pokemon. People who will raise and battle with Pokemon are called trainers. Do you want to turn the page? Sure. The second page says, to try to catch a Pokemon, throw a Pokeball at the center of the white ring. If you throw a Pokeball while a Pokemon is moving, you may not be able to catch it. Want to turn the page? Sure. The third page says, Pokemon trainers seek others to battle and defeat in Pokemon battles. T to trainers, the taste of victory is sweet. So it is all about tastes, dude. What if I don't like sweet things? What if I want something that's like savory, dude? Battles are constantly waged at Pokemon gyms everywhere. Do you want to turn the page? Sure. The fourth page says, the goal for all Pokemon trainers is simple. It is to defeat the eighth It is to defeat the eight gym leaders in the region. Do so to earn the right to face the extremely strong Elite Four of the Pokemon League. Hey, don't look at my notes! Well, that's mostly all we can do here, but we can look at this blackboard to actually look at some status effects. So we can see about the five main status effects, which are Sleep, Burn, Poison, Frozen, and Paralysis. So with Sleep, if a Pokemon falls asleep, it will be unable to attack till it wakes. And Sleep actually lasts one to three turns, I believe it is. So we can use an Awakening to wake it up. Let's go to getting burned. When a Pokemon is burned, its attack is lowered and it will steadily lose its HP. Now it only lowers physical attack by half and they'll lose 1 16th of their HP every turn. Being poisoned. If a Pokemon is poisoned, it'll steadily lose HP, specifically 1 8th of their HP every turn. Poisoning won't disappear after the battle, so heal it with an antidote. We've also got being frozen. If a Pokemon is frozen, it becomes helplessly immobile. It stays frozen even after the battle ends. A freeze has a 20% chance each turn to be broken. So if you get really bad luck, you'll just stay frozen for a long time. But if an opponent hits you with a fire attack, that will thaw out your freeze as well. We've got Paralysis. Paralysis reduces speed and may prevent a Pokemon from using moves in battle. Specifically, it reduces your speed by half, and it has a 25% chance for you to not be able to move in battle. And Paralysis does not go away after the battle en ends either. Use Paralysis or Paralyze Heal to remove it. And one side note about these status effects. Paralysis cannot affect Electric Pokemon. Freeze cannot affect Ice Pokemon. Poison cannot affect Poison or Steel Pokemon. And Burn cannot affect Fire Pokemon. So keep that in mind, but... Sleep can affect all of them. Okay, that is enough getting school. Let's get the crud out of here. And let's go over here. This is the Pokemart. So this is where we're going to buy most of our items. But we've already got lots of Pokeballs, so I'm not that worried about Pokeballs for now. This guy says he's got to buy some potions. I don't really think potions are too necessary right now. Uh, a lot of people think this game is really easy. It actually is pretty easy early on. But later on in the game, it actually does get pretty tough. At least by Pokemon standards. Uh, but we won't really need potions for a little while at least. But there are a ton of items available, especially the ones that they just mentioned in the Pokemon School. All the status healing stuff right here. But there's also potions and Pokeballs. I am going to go ahead and buy one antidote because the area that we're going to be going to in the next episode has some chances to get poisoned. So I'll just buy that just to have, but everything else I think we're fine. Alright guys, enough walking around town. Let's go and catch some Pokemon. And I gotta say, sorry if today's progress is a little bit slow. I originally planned my episodes so that what I'm doing today was going to be part of episode 1, but... 
Well, episode one turned out being really long, so consider this more like part 1.5 rather than part two. But up here, watch Eevee's tail as we walk along. Let's see. There we go. You see how Eevee starts to wag their tail? When Eevee wags their tail like that, that means that there's an item nearby. Now, sometimes you'll be able to see the items. It'll look like a Pokeball. But in some cases like this, it'll be completely hidden. So here we have a hidden potion. So you definitely want to watch out for Eevee's tail or Pikachu's tail if you're playing the Pikachu version. If you're near an item, they'll start wagging. So it's pretty handy. So let's go over to Route 22, guys. There's three new Pokemon I want to catch here. And one of them is right there. We've got another bird Pokemon here. Let's see if we can get him. This guy looks all kinds of angry, dude. But here we got a wild Spearow. So let's go ahead and get ready. And I'm just going to throw the ball here. And got a great, not an excellent, but that's okay. I'm not going to use those raspberries. We got raspberries last episode. If we use those, it makes them easier to catch. But Pokemon right now are so easy to catch that I would not waste the raspberries. Here we get a Pineapp Berry as well as a bunch of experience. Awesome. Level 4 on Bellsprout and level 5 on Rattata. Again, those guys are not part of my main team, but hey, extra levels, cool. Spearow's data will be added to the Pokedex, inept at flying high. However, it can fly around very fast to protect its territory. Alrighty then, Spearow has been added to your party. Let's see if we can find those other two Pokemon that I want. There's one right there! Alright, let's go get him, dude! So this Pokemon right here is going to be... Oh, I guess it's gonna run away first. It's gonna be a Nidoran female. It's kind of odd because Pokemon all have... Well, most Pokemon have male and female. But back in the original Pokemon games, they were just all... Uh, they didn't have that crud. So basically, they made a Nidoran male and a Nidoran female as like the only gendered Pokemon in the entire game. Uh, but now it's just kind of weird that they're two separate Pokemon, but they still are. Anyways, we caught them. We get another Raspberry and some experience there. And we get more level ups. Level 8 on Freya. Awesome. Let's go get the Pokedex data for Nidoran female here. A mild-mannered Pokemon that does not like to fight. Beware! Its small horn secretes venom. It's a poison-type Pokemon there. And like I mentioned, there's Nidoran female. Ah, oh, crud. Yeah, like I mentioned, there's Nidoran female. And as you can guess, we can also find Nidoran male here. He's actually purple instead of blue. So that one's blue. That's a Nidoran female. So we could just wait around. I have the old habit. Back in other Pokemon games, you had to run around in the grass a lot. So I have a habit of doing that. But you don't have to. You can just stand by it and wait for Pokemon to show up. But uh, there it is. No, that's Rattata. Gosh dang it, the purple trolled me. Only a few Pokemon can show up at a time. So you have to wait for them to go away for new stuff to appear. But after a while, you can see Spearow flies away right there. So after a while, they'll go away. I guess while we're waiting for this, I'm going to go up here because there's another hidden item in this bush right here. We can see Eevee's tail a little wagging along. And right here we get an antidote for free. Awesome. Oh, Nidoran, where are you? Aha, there they are. So let's go and get Nidoran male. Back in my Pokemon Yellow Let's Play, I actually did use a Nidoran male. I thought about using a Nidoran female in this playthrough to kind of mirror that, but I decided, you know what, having two Kanto Let's Plays that both use uh, Nidoran, maybe not the most interesting, so we won't be using any Nidoran on my team this time around. But there we go, Nidoran Mail is caught, and with that we have all of the new Pokemon for Route 22 here. There we go, another Raspberry. Its large ears are always kept upright. If it senses danger, it will attack with a poisonous sting. So once again, they're a poison type Pokemon. And something really cool about Nidoran Male, you can see they actually have Peck, which is a flying attack, which is super effective on bug type Pokemon. The area that we're going to in the next episode has a lot of bug type Pokemon. Combo that with the fact that they're a poison type so they cannot be poisoned. They're pretty handy for the next area. But like I said, we're not going to be using a Nidoran on my team. Although I will add them just to level them up, I guess. So let's go ahead and hit add to party here. I'll put them in place of Bellsprout, I suppose. And I'm going to move them up just like that. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take Nidoran out of our... Nidoran female out of the Pokeball here, just to follow along. And let's move on, guys, because if we go right over here... Suddenly, Buttheads! Oh, hey, Psycho! What's up, Yarg? You hoping to make it to the Pokemon League someday, too? That's where you can battle the strongest of all Pokemon trainers, the ones they call the Elite Four. I was hoping maybe I could get a glimpse of them, but the guard at the gate wouldn't even let me pass without any badges from Pokemon gyms. Guess I'll just have to get there the long way, by battling and getting stronger. So, Psycho, I guess it means it's own! And here we have a battle with Yarg. Now, if you came to Route 22 here before deliver, uh, delivering the parcel to Oak, Yarg would not be here. So you have to deliver the parcel and then come here, and then you can battle Yarg. So he starts off with a Pidgey, which is going to be very, very easy, because this Pidgey is only level 3. I'm probably just going to defeat it with one quick attack here. Let's see if we do. And down it goes. There you go. So we already know what Yarg's other Pokemon is. Of course, it's going to be a Pikachu, which is an electric type. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a Bellsprout here because Grass-type actually resists... Oh, I don't want to switch here. 
Uh, grass type actually resists electric type, so you would take half damage from Pikachu's Thundershock. But honestly, we're gonna beat him pretty easily once again. I think we'll defeat him probably with two quick attacks. Yeah, so we will take the Thundershock here. It'll do full damage, but <laughs> Freya is just so strong. It doesn't really matter too much right now. Like I said, the game starts off very easy. It does get more challenging later on, but the first uh, few areas are pretty easy. So there we go, we got Pikachu defeated, and once again we have defeated Yarg. I guess we'll get quick attack on Rattata as well. All kinds of level ups, dude! Whoa, seriously? Get some money, and Yarg does not give us any Pokeballs. Darn it, Yarg. Oh well. Hmm, maybe battling like this is just helping you get stronger, huh, Psycho? Oh well, that works too. Let's train hard so that someday we both make it to the Pokemon League. Alright, I'll catch you later, Yarg. So let's go ahead and move on. Is he at the bottom left? You can see Freya, or Evie, I guess, is shaking the little Joy-Con. So if we shake the Joy-Con, there's Freya. How you doing? Freya looks proud and is giving a contented smile. I guess it's about time we actually play with him today, so we'll give them a few pets. And we also got a new berry from one of the uh, battles. We could just feed that to... Uh, we could feed that to uh, Freya here, but we could also use that in the battles themselves. I only have one of those, so I'm just going to feed them a raspberry. Mmm, eat that crud. There we go. I want to pet them enough so that they get like this super mega, super mega shine. Sometimes they'll do that. How many times do I got to pet you? There they go. We got the super mega shine. So I think that's enough petting for now. We'll get out of here. And I do want to go over here. There's one more item we can get. And also, I just want to show off the Pokemon League is up here as well. But like Yarg was saying, we actually can't go through until we get some badges. So we'll come back to there once we get some gym badges. But for now, I just want to hop down here and grab ourselves five Pokeballs, because we definitely need more of those. I guess it makes up for the fact that Yarg didn't, did not give us any Pokeballs. But yeah, for the time being, we are done with Route 22, so let's move on. We're gonna go back to Viridian City, and now let's go out the north. We've got one more building to check out here, so I guess let's go inside and do that crud. But we're just about ready to move on. Hey, guy! Coming up with nicknames is fun, but it's not so easy to do. Clever names are nice, but simple names are easier to remember. You can change your name in the menu. Yep, I've already showed that off. We already know that. Speary to tweet! My daddy loves Pokemon too. Okay, the funny thing, they had to write their nickname on the wall. He was saying that short names are easy to remember. I guess Speary is just too hard for this guy to remember, so he had to write it on his wall for some reason. And yo, the dialogue from this little character right here, this totally bugs me, so let's talk to her. Wow, your Pokemon is riding on you. That's super cute. But I think my Pokemon would be a bit too heavy for me. That's why I have it walk with me instead. What bugs me about this is if you look at the Pokedex, Eevee actually weighs more than Oddish does. And if you're playing the Pikachu version, Pikachu also weighs more than Oddish does. And she looks like she's about the same age as us, so I don't know how you can't carry a lighter Pokemon than I'm carrying, but oh well. Now over here, speaking of gyms, Viridian City Pokemon Gym. The downside, the doors to the Viridian City Pokemon Gym are locked tight. We cannot go there, and I'll just tell you guys now, this is actually the final gym in the entire game that we'll be doing, so it's not gonna be... We're not gonna come to this gym for a very, very long time. This Pokemon Gym is always closed, I wonder who the gym leader is. Me too. Alrighty, let's move on and look at this sign, because there's something very important that's new to this version of Pokemon. Shake the second controller to call in a support trainer. Enjoy your adventure together. So this is a feature I really want to talk about, because, well, this game does indeed have co-op. Suddenly, Wahey's here! <laughs> Heck yeah, dude! So yeah, you can play this game with two players, or if you're like me and you don't have any friends, you can play two people by yourself, I guess. Now, the second player is a little odd, because they actually cannot run into wild Pokémon. So let's see if I can get... See right there, there's a wild Pokémon. They can only bump into them. They won't even make sound effects with the grass, and they'll kind of just bump into things. But, we can go and uh, run into them with our main character here. And this is where things get interesting. We actually do enter the battle together, and we can both throw Pokeballs. So let's get ready. If we throw them at the same time, let's see if we can get this. Boom! We get an excellent, we get a fancy Synchro Summon right here. Or, no, that's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. We get a fancy synchronized Pokemon capture. Uh, and there you go. So it increases your catch rate, and it gives you a bunch more experience if you do that. But I think it uses two Pokeballs. Uh, we get a six time multiplier right there, as you can see, though. It's pretty amazing. Lots of experience. We got two levels for Nidoran and, like, a bunch of levels for everyone else. So Freya's level nine. We got a bunch of levels on everyone else here as well. Pretty nifty. The only downside is you have to go through all this text for every single level. But, oh well. But I didn't really want that Pidgey, but there are a couple Pokemon here I do want. So let's see if we can find them. We saw one before, but he kind of vanished. Remember that bug catcher in the last episode said there's two Caterpillar Pokemon? And those two Caterpillar Pokemon we can actually find right here. So let's see if one of them will pop up. Where are you, buddy? I can't find any Caterpillars! Ah! 
<laughs> well, this is odd. They're actually pretty reasonably common. I guess while we're waiting, I should explain something. You might notice why Hay does not have any Pokemon following behind them, but we actually can set it up so that they do. So the way it works, you see that we have this little star next to uh, Nidoran female here. The Pokemon that is next in the list from that uh, from the starred Pokemon is who's going to follow behind uh, the second player. So you see the next Pokemon in the list right now is Rattata. If we exit out, and you can see they've got Rattata. The reason it was not working before is because the next Pokemon on the list was actually Freya, and you cannot have the the uh, partner Pokemon follow behind. So if the next Pokemon on the list is the partner, it's not going to work out so well. But say we put Nidoran female right there, we have Nidoran male up here. Then it kind of wraps around, it goes from the last spot, wraps around to the first spot, and now Nidoran male's following behind. So there you go, that's how you can choose what follows behind the second player. Alright, let's go back and try to catch some darn caterpillars. There's one! Yeah, let's get him, dude! Alright, so we found our first caterpillar Pokemon. This one is going to be Weedle, and Weedle is the one that can poison us, but during this capture segment, they can't poison us, so let's get ready. And let's wait for it. And throw! I was a little bit early, so we only got a great, but it's just a gosh dang Weedle. We should be able to catch it no problem here. So let's see if we got it. And there we go. Awesome. All kinds of experience and a pineapple berry. Very cool. Yeah, getting the synchronized capture is actually very easy when you're playing by yourself, but when you're playing with another player, it can be a little bit more tricky. But here's Weedle, the bug poison Pokemon. Beware of the sharp stinger on its head. It hides in grass and bushes where it eats leaves. Wow. Very, very violent, eating leaves. Oh, there's another Weedle. I want the other one, the green one. There it is, we found him. All right, the last Pokemon that we can catch in this area is going to be a gosh dang, the gosh dang Caterpie. Is it a cat or is it a pie? I don't know, man, but let's see if we can catch him. Let's go get our balls ready. Throw those two balls at him. Oh, get the double, excellent, dude. Yeah, let's see, that should, that should definitely capture a Caterpie. And we got him. All right, dude. 53 experience just from a Caterpie. Yeah, synchro capturing is just so ridiculous. It's so good. Caterpie's data will be added to the Pokedex. It is just a pure bug Pokemon. If you touch the feeler on top of its head, it will release a horrible stink to protect itself. That's just disgusting. Are you guys on Team Caterpie or Team Weedle? I've always preferred Caterpie personally. But let's go inside this building right here. There's a couple characters to talk to. Uh, this girl right here says something kind of important. Let's see. If your Pokemon uses a move that's the same type as itself, the move's power will get a boost. So if you use a type, for example, if Eevee, the normal type Pokemon, uses a normal type attack, we'll get a uh, 1.5 times boost. So even though Quick Attack's power is normally 40, with 1.5 times boost, it's actually 60 power. So I want to show something off. Let's go into this next area here, Viridian Forest. Now... This co-op feature is not just for capturing. If we go and get into a battle, well, you'll see. Let's go fight this little kid right here, I guess. Hey, you have Pokemon, right? Come on, let's battle him. Okay, it's not exactly going to be very fair for you, though, because I'm playing co-op. So if we go in this battle with Bug Catcher Rick, he's going to go ahead and send out a Caterpie, probably going to be like level 3 or some crud. And, well, Freya's going to go out, but not only Freya, our support trainer also sends out Nidoran Male, so... Yes, we get to two versus one. It is ridiculous. I mean, if you want to play with a friend or something or a family member, that's awesome, but it basically breaks the game if you want to do this by yourself. So I just wanted to show this off now because pretty much in just about every episode in the future, I will not be abusing co-op. I'm just going to be playing as one player here. I just wanted to show off that, yes, you can two versus one. And even in battles where they have more than one Pokemon, they'll only send one out. So even if the... the opponent has multiple Pokemon, you're still two versus one them. It's ridiculous. No, Caterpie can't hack it. Now, the dual battle thing is important because certain attacks, like Nidoran Female gets an, a move called Helping Hand, which will boost the power of your teammate's attack, but it's not really useful unless you're doing a dual battle like that. So that's a good move for co-op. But anyways, guys, it's time to go ahead and say goodbye to Wahei. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here for today. I know that progress is a little bit light in this episode, but like I said, this is more of like a part 1.5 because I wanted to do all this stuff in the first episode. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but I talk with my hands a lot. But as you can see, this episode's pretty long. The first episode is pretty long, so you can see why I split it into two. But we'll come back next time. We'll start making some real progress, and we'll go and defeat the entire Viridian Forest. So I'll see you guys then. Take care. Take care.